There are a few phrases that, if rephrased, would change the tone and nature of how people engage in what they think of government. First one would be, when I hear people say, I would like the government to pay more to teachers, for example, I would like to see that rephrased as, I would like the taxpayer to pay more to teachers. Anytime you use the word government and it comes to giving something, and actually that giving is even wrong because it's redistributing. They don't give anything. It's not theirs to give. They take from one person and redistribute it to another person. So what you're doing is you're effectively asking your fellow taxpayer to give you something. And that's how the language should be. So when we're negotiating or when we're hearing the language of, oh, uh, the government's negotiating with the doctors and they should give them more. The language should be, I want fellow taxpayers, myself included, to give the doctors more. Let's see what happens with that and how everybody feels so good about giving at that point. The other thing that would change a cause a revolution in this country is if we did not have source deductions. Well, source deductions are what happens to everybody who's employed by a third party employer. Your CPP, your EI, your taxes are automatically taken off your check. So they're sort of like just using your Interact, your debit, or you know, like a credit card. You don't feel the pain. You know that when you go shopping, if you have to pay for something in cash, it hurts a lot more. So can you imagine if every month you had to write these clowns in Ottawa and uh, Victoria or wherever your capital city is a check? That's right. Every month you had to sit down and write them a check. I'm sure by the second or third check, you'd be like, what am I sending this money for? That's what would happen. You'd have a revolution because people have... And, and I've seen this through all age spectrums. This is not just something with the young. There is a lot of older people who are ignorant of what government does, essentially what these bureaucrats and elected politicians do and where the money comes from. Somehow they think that these folks generate a source of revenue. What you have to realize is when they redistribute wealth, they take their cut. They're handlers. They're essentially like uh, fund managers. They're getting paid to manage this money and in 99.9% .9 of the case, ineffectively. Why? Because you can't fire them, essentially. The bureaucrats anyway, the ones who are uh, staunchly in. And the problem is that the majority of people who will vote for the ones who will be fiscally not prudent are the ones who want all the free stuff. That's right. You've got one person who says, oh man, I get all this free money, I'm getting the serve money or whatever the money may be. What they fail to realize is that money's coming from their neighbor. And their neighbor also wants free stuff because he or she's thinking, well, I'm getting all this stuff for free too. All they're doing is it's being redistributed around. And when the government, uh, the elected politicians, when the taxpayer is doling you out money and they're printing money, because effectively it's the taxpayer that's, uh, the credit card limit's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and that bill is going to eventually come due. And the people that are going to pay for it are hardworking Canadians who are paying taxes. It's not going to be these politicians, this elected class. Yes, they pay taxes, but they're such a small group. And they basically are focused on redistributing money to their special interest groups. So you have to realize that's where it all comes and goes from. So when you're asking for all of this free stuff, and let's say you've got kids and you want more and more and more, all you're simply doing is shifting the burden onto your kids for the future. That's it. And at some point in the system, there's just nobody left to pay to support all the madness that happens. Case in point, you look at our current healthcare system. It's a joke. Canadians are so smug and arrogant about this free healthcare. Well, we have rationed health care. There's only two ways to effectively manage health care or anything else for that matter. You either let it, the free market take care of it or you have socialized medicine like what we do. So if there's only 100 knee surgeries available and that's all the system can fund, well, guess what? If you're person 101, you got to wait. There's no more left for you. And that's why there's such a push to have the uh, maids program to basically encourage more Canadians to off themselves when they've got something because quite honestly we can't afford to keep supporting the ones that are there 
This is the problem with this, folks. And the reason, the primary driver is there's no accountability. There is no accountability for a bureaucrat, a civil servant to manage your money well. They're spending other people's money. So if you've got this person who's sitting in, let's say, the health department, and they're, they're in charge of $100 million, they are getting this money to come in. They are essentially managing that money, distributing it to hospitals or wherever else they are, but they're not the end user. They're not the ones who are going to be held accountable if it's a failure. They also are not hearing from, like, if you're the consumer. So let's say I get to, I would have to pay for a doctor. When I walk into this doctor, if I'm the one paying for his or her services, I'm going to expect value from it. This doctor will realize that if I'm the one writing them the check directly, it's not third party person, they're accountable to me. So that creates accountability in the system all the way through. Now, I will hear from people who whine and say, well, everybody can't afford it. It's, we're talking private health care. Yes, we're talking a two-tier system, essentially a private and a public. Those who can afford it, well, God bless them. Let them take the services they do. And those who can't afford it, fine, we'll assist them with it. But if you look at one of the classic failures in our medical system is that we do not look at preventative care. That's not promoted. If you're obese or whatever else, you're not encouraged to do anymore. And we had talked about this in a video past Mac where it's actually frowned upon. There's nothing preventative that's taught. Why? Because there's no incentive. There's no win for the people that are offering the services. Why would they want you to be healthier? So there is a lot of flaws with this. And the reason primarily is because of the way that we associate the language with it. The moment we stop thinking of these services as free and the moment you start using in every conversation, taxpayer, anytime you are asking or you hear a friend, a colleague, someone say, I want the government to give me this, say, you want the taxpayer to give you this. Get this concept across to your kids. If there's any one concept that would be crystal for them, that would be invaluable to them, it's this concept. And once they wrap their head around it, it changes things because you come to realize that this is your, there's no, the entitlement starts changing because you begin to come clear the concept that you have to pay for the entitlement that you're seeking. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can also follow me on my local and my rumbles and rumbles. Please subscribe to my rumbles channel because sometimes YouTube says, well, oh, we don't like this video. And they suddenly say, no, no videos for you for a week. So that's why you can still follow me and check out what I'm posting and uh, check out some of my other past videos. And I will see you next time.